Hi students, welcome to today's lecture. In the previous lecture, we were discussing about graphical representation of motion, isn't it? Are you remembering which are the different types of graph we were discussing? Yes, Manam, can you tell me? Yes, distance time graph, velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. Again, we had seen how can we calculate the slope of the distance time graph? The slope of the distance time graph gives us speed and the slope of velocity time graph gives us acceleration. One more thing we have seen that we are able to calculate the distance traveled from the velocity time graph. How was it? By taking the area under the graph. Are you remembering all this? Yes, good. Today we are going to study about the most important part of this lesson. Do you know which is that? Yes, kinematic equations. In physics, when we come to mechanics, kinematic equations becomes the most important part. We say that equations of motion. When I am saying you equations of motion, you may not be understanding what are these equations. We have heard about these equations only in mathematics. No, in physics also we are having some equations. It is simple. These equations are the relationship between initial velocity of the body, final velocity of the body, acceleration of the body distance traveled by the body and the time taken. So, we are having three different equations of motion. They are known as first equation of motion, second equation of motion and third equation of motion. Now, we will see that where we have to apply these equations of motion in our practical life. Say here, we have studied about uniformly accelerated motion. So, the equations of motion is not applicable to all the types of motion, but it is applicable to only which type of motion? Uniformly accelerated motion. To study about uniformly accelerated motion, we have different examples, but we will Think about a very particular example that you all of you like because you like to bounce a ball. Yes or no? So, when you are dropping a ball, that means when I am keeping the ball in my hand, what is its initial velocity? Now, the ball is at rest. So, what is its initial velocity? Initial velocity is equal to 0. But what happens when I drop this ball? It slowly attains velocity and when it reaches and hits my hand, it attains the maximum velocity. In this case, someone is asking you, can you give me what is the velocity of this ball when it touches my hand? You do not know. Again, someone is asking, See, final velocity of the ball is this much and time taken to hit the ball on the hand is this much. Both the quantities are given. The question is asking, how much distance your ball has traveled during this time interval? Can you calculate it? No. So, how we are able to calculate all these things? By using the equations of motion. So, which are our three equations of motion? First equation, V is equal to U plus A T. That is the relationship between final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration and time taken. Now, second equation, S is equal to U T plus half A T squared. The second equation gives us what is the distance traveled by the body or the displacement of the body and the relation with time taken and acceleration. Now, coming to third equation, V squared minus U squared is equal to 2 A S. This equation gives us relation between final velocity, 
and distance travelled by the body. So, children, the important thing is first we should know which are the three equations of motion. Again, we will derive one by one equations of motion. That is very important. Lesson here, how to derive it. And for your future studies, that is for your 11 standard physics, it is very important. So, please understand it. Now, for deriving the first equation, what we are going to do first of all, the body you had seen that I am dropping the ball. Yes, while I am dropping the ball, the ball is falling on the way, somewhere, some distance. Suppose now this is in my hand, initial velocity is equal to 0. So, while I am dropping on the way somewhere here, we are observing this ball. Okay? You are not observing the ball when the ball is in my hand. But you are going to observe the ball when it is in motion. That means, when you start observing the ball, in between you are observing, it means already at that time the ball had some velocity, some initial velocity. Is it clear? So, while we are drawing the velocity time graph of this uniformly accelerated ball, we will take velocity along the y axis, time along the x axis. Is it clear? Now, I already have told you when we are starting observing our ball, when it is on the way, that means it is having some initial velocity at that point. You are observing it on the way. So, the time you observe it, time is equal to 0, but the body is having some initial velocity. So, that initial velocity is represented by point A. Now, when it touches my hand, that point is final velocity represented by D. Is it clear? Now, from the graph, how will we find out the first equation for that? Oh, everything we are doing from the graph. From the graph, what we are going to write? OA. OA, what it represents? OA. Now, OA is U, initial velocity. Same distance OA is here for DC. Yes or no? Yes. So, I will write OA is equal to BC is equal to U. So, OA equal to BC equal to U. Second, OE, what is OE represents? OE represents final velocity. So, O E is equal to same distance is C D. Is it clear? O E that is our final velocity. Look at the graph. D C also gives the same distance. So, what I will write? O E is equal to D C. is equal to V, final velocity. Clear that much? Next, what is OC represents time taken? So, OC equal to ABC, time taken. So, from the graph now, what all things we have written? OA is equal to BC equal to initial velocity. OE is equal to DC equal to final velocity. Now, time taken is OC. So, OC equal to AB is equal to time taken. Clear? Now, do one thing. Suppose I want to get DB. How I will get it? See, when I have this much distance in my pen, I just want to find out how much is this much distance. 
how I will find it out? First, I will take the total length of this. Is it clear? Then, I will subtract this much. Yes or no? Yes. Then, I will get the length of this because it is given full length of this pen and the length of this much part is given to me. Can I find it out this much part length? Yes. Total length minus length of the small part. Is it clear? Same thing I am going to apply here. I want to find out what is the distance dB. How I will get? dB is equal to total first I will take dC minus BC because DC is given to us V. Is it clear why I have taken like that and BC is given to us U. These two quantities are known to us. So, DB is equal to DC minus BC. So, from the graph which are the quantities we are getting did you understand? Can I represent DB? What is DC? V minus what is BC? U. Is it clear that much? Yes. Now, we are coming to what is our requirement to find out the acceleration. I have told you in the beginning itself from the velocity time graph how we are getting acceleration find out the slope of the graph. So, slope is equal to, are you remembering how we under, uh, find out this slope? Yes, draw from the point 1 right angled triangle. So, I have DBA, the right angled triangle DBA or ADB, any way you can. Now, what is the meaning of slope? Height of the right angled triangle divided by its base. Understood? So, what is the height? DB is the height. So, DB upon what is the base? AB. Clear? Slope is equal to DB upon AB. Now, what we have to do? Simple. DB is what? DB is equal to V minus U. And what is AB? AB is equal to T. Now, what is the slope we had seen? Acceleration. Which letter we are using to represent acceleration? Small letter A. So, A is equal to V minus u upon t. Is it clear? So, our first equation a is equal to v minus u upon t that is actually the definition of acceleration, but we have done it by using velocity time graph. Now, nothing just rearrange cross multiplication. What are we getting? a into t a t. So, a t is equal to v minus u. Then, we have to rearrange the term for what? Because our first equation is having a standard form. We have to maintain that standard form in writing. So, we will write it. First, a t is equal to v minus u. Rearrange the terms, we will get v is equal to u plus a t. This is the standard form of first equation. So, did you understand how to derive? I will say one more time. First of all, draw the velocity time graph. Second thing, from the graph, you mark all the points. Then, from the graph, OA is equal to BC equal to U. Second, OA is equal to DC equal to V. Then, AOC equal to a B equal to T. Then D B we have to calculate alone because we want to find out slope. Yes. So D B equal to D C minus B C. We replaced D C by V, B C by U. So D B is equal to V minus U. Next we are applying little theory 
which we have studied that is acceleration is the slope of the velocity time graph. So, what is slope dB by AB? Slope means height of the right angled triangle divided by base. So, dB by AB we substituted its values V minus U by T. Then slope, what is slope? Acceleration. So, A is equal to V minus U upon T. Rearranging the terms, first we cross multiplied. What did we get? A T is equal to V minus U. Rearranged the terms because we want it in this form. So, V is equal to U plus A T. This is the derivation of first equation. Now, for you to write in your fair book, clearly I have written here everything. So, clearly you should write down, first to draw the graph, then write down all the things what we have written from the graph, step by step. So, up to dB is equal to V minus U. Next to part, slope of the velocity time graph is equal to acceleration. Then, fully, what we got? A is equal to V minus U upon T. So, A T is equal to V minus U, V is equal to A T plus U. So, this is the derivation of first equation. I hope you understood. We will stop by with this remaining part. We will continue in the next class.